In this video, I will show you how to use native backup solution in your vCenter server appliance to backup your vCenter server. In a production environment, backing up your vCenter server is very crucial, which is why there are a lot of tools such as Veeam and Avamar that offers enterprise level backup protection to all your virtual machines. But VMware provides native protection solution that allows you to back up your inventory, configuration, stats, events, and tasks of your vCenter server appliance. The backup option is available in the vCenter server management interface to back up your vCSA. While backing up, you can select whether to include historical data such as stats, events, and tasks in the backup file. For recovery purpose, this backup would be useful if taken before activities such as patching or upgrade of your vCenter server or any changes that can cause issues to your vCenter server. Just so you know, if you're running vCHA, which is vCenter server high availability, then this native backup operation backs up only the active node. One of the prerequisite for the backup of VCSA is that you must have a FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, SFTP, NFS or SMB location with sufficient disk space to store the backups. But for this demo, I will use a FTP location to backup my VCSA. So I have a Windows file server where I'm going to install IIS role and FTP role service to create a FTP site. I've already logged into this file server using administrative privileges. I will open up server manager, click manage and click add roles and features. Click next on before you begin screen on select installation type with the option role based or feature based installation selected, click next. On the server selection screen with the file 01, which is my file server selected, I'll click next. On server role screen, I will scroll down here and select web server IIS. On the dialog box that pops up, I will keep the option include management tools if applicable selected and I'll click add features. Click next. Click next on the features screen. Click next on the web server role IIS screen. On the role service screen, scroll down and check FTP server and click next. Click install on confirmation screen. Wait for the installation to complete. And close the wizard when the installation has completed. So after installing IIS role and FTP role service, I will start by creating a FTP site. Back in the server manager, click on tools and click Internet Information Services IIS Manager. When the MMC console opens up, right click on the server name and select Add FTP Site. In the Site Information window that opens up, specify a site name for the FTP site. I will specify the name as FTP underscore VCSA underscore backup. For the physical path, you need to specify a location where you are going to save the VCSA backups. I will click on this button. And since this is a lab, I will create a folder under C drive called backups and create a subfolder called VCSA. This is where I'm going to save the VCSA backups and click OK. Click Next. In the binding and SSL settings screen, Specify whether you want to use the SSL for the FTP site or not. If you prefer, you can use public or internal certificate. I will select no SSL. And for the binding, I will keep all unassigned selected. And I will also keep the default port, which is 21. And I'll click next. In the next screen for authentication, I will select basic authentication, which requires a username and password to access the FTP site. I've already created a local user account on this file server called FTP admin. And I've also made this local user account a member of administrators group so that it will have full rights to create the files in VCSA folder of backups folder. 
Otherwise, you may need to create the appropriate NTFS permission to allow this user to create files under this folder. I'll click cancel and close this. I'll click cancel here and close this. And for the authorization under allow access to, I will say specified users and I'll specify my local user account, which is FTP admin. You can also use an AD account if this file server is joined to Active Directory. Under permissions, I will say read and write and click finish. That's it, FTP site has been successfully created and started as well. To test this FTP site, I will open up Windows Explorer and I'll type the FTP IP address and I'll type my FTP username, which is FTP admin and the password and click on log on. I don't see anything because there is nothing in there currently, but if I create a text file, let's say I go back to my home directory. If I create a text file, I should be able to see in there. Let me refresh. Yep, there you go. All right, the next step is to back up the VCSA. So I will open up a browser and navigate to the vCenter server management interface which is https 192.168.10.6 colon 5480. I'll click advanced and click continue. I'll log in as root. In this portal, I will click on backup. In here, you can also see an option to schedule the backup by clicking configure. The backup schedule option is not available in the VCSA 6.5 and to schedule the backup in VCSA 6.5, you need to use bash scripting. So backup schedule is only available in VCSA 6.7 and 7.0. I'll click cancel. I will click backup now and it opens up the backup now wizard. If I've already configured the backup schedule, I could use the same backup location and use a name from the backup schedule by selecting this checkbox, use backup location and username from backup schedule. I've not configured the backup schedule yet, so that's why this option is grayed out. Now enter the backup location details, including the protocol to use to connect your backup server, the server address, the port number, and the backup folder, including subfolder to store the backup files. As I mentioned before, FTP, FTPS, HTTP, HTTPS, SFTP, NFS, or SMB are the supported protocols. But if you're using FTP, FTPS, HTTP, or HTTPS, the path is relative to the home directory configured for this service. In my case, this would be FTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.10.200 which points to my FTP home directory which is C drive backups VCSA. So I don't have to type my FTP location as FTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address backups forward slash VCSA. I just have to type the FTP IP address as FTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.10.200. For backup server credential, enter a username and password of an account that has the right privileges. Also make sure that the username and password should only contain ASCII characters. I will type my FTP admin username and its password. You can optionally enter an encryption password if you want to encrypt your backup file. If you select to encrypt the backup data, you must use the same encryption password while restoring the vCenter server using this backup. I'll skip this. Now there is an option to verify the DB health check, which is checked by default. DB health check helps you to determine the status of your database to make sure your database is healthy but the backup may take a little longer if this option is enabled. Like I mentioned before, you can backup stats, events, and tasks to backup your historical data from your vCenter server. If you don't need the historical data, you can uncheck this option, but I'll keep this option checked. This will also backup inventory and configuration by default, which is very important, and you cannot uncheck this option. It also shows the size of your backup file for both stats, events, and tasks, as well as inventory and configuration. 
Optionally, you can type a description. I'll skip that and click start to start the backup process. Also, you need to make sure that the firewall is allowed to take the backup from your vCenter server to the file server. Now it will show the progress of the backup under the activity. Remember, this is just one time backup that we did. But if you would like to schedule the backup, you need to click configure. All right, the backup has completed. And if I go to my FTP location, I can see the backup file of my VCSA. Also, we should have our backup files organized in a per directory. The ones that have the letter M at the beginning of the folder name are the manual backups. And you will see the scheduled ones will have a letter S. If we browse the backup folder, you can see few .gz archives, which are actually dumps from your vCenter server database, events, logs, and etc. So this is how you backup your vCenter server appliance. And in case if your VCSA has a problem and you would like to restore, then you need to use the same ISO with the same build that was used for the installation of VCSA. First, you need to deploy a fresh new VCSA appliance. In the installer screen, select Restore. Specify your backup IP along with the username and password. Select your backup. And review your backup information to start the backup. In the phase two of Restore, you can again review your backup details. All right, so, so that's how easy it is to use the native backup solution of vCenter Server to backup your vCenter Server appliance. I hope you like this video. For more videos like these, please subscribe to my channel.